All right, welcome to episode number two of No New Ideas. I'm Clinton Davis. I'm Rudy Hanadis. And the movie we're going to be covering this week is Nightmare on Elm Street Part 3, uh, the Dream, Dream Warriors. Warriors. But before that, I have a question. Have you watched the premiere of American Horror Story? I have not. I and think uh, after, I mean, after like the, what was it, a couple seasons? What season was it? Uh, the circus. The was, circus was one? where the last thing where I just kind of okay. Just so you, you've okay. See, I thought the freak show season was fantastic, and I'm one of the few apparently because <laughs> I thought it was <laughs> I thought it was really great. I thought it was weird. I thought the acting was great in it. Um, they used real freaks, which is always nice um, for reality's sake or whatever. Um, I don't know what that says about <laughs> my enjoyment of watching them on screen, but. Um, the hotel season, which was after that, was not great. Yeah, that I was saw, the one where I st my I started to yeah, fall. Yeah, I saw tidbits of it. And it was just I, I could not do it. It was okay. The the serial killer yeah. part in it, mm -hmm. like the clip that I saw mm -hmm. because like the little clip that was shown to me was great. Like that was cool. See, I that was the serial killer was the part that I liked the least. Really? Like, yeah, I or, thought it was cool, but like I mean I. Obviously, I have no idea where any context was. Sure, in, but just that standalone thing was really, really yeah. cool. They like all American horror stories. It looked great while you're watching it. Yeah, like the visuals were all great. The acting in it was great. Kathy Bates was fantastic in it. Uh, Dennis O'Hare was fantastic in it, and Lady Gaga was good. She was like surprisingly good. I think I think a lot of people went in expecting it to be horrible to be horrible because yeah. of her. She was actually really good, and I would say it was one of the best parts. Just the storytelling itself was not great. The Roanoke season, they mixed it up mm -hmm. and changed all their um, just the way they do stuff. Yeah. They changed like with the timelines and stuff. I was a huge fan of the Roanoke season. Mm -hmm. I thought it was fantastic. I liked everything about it. Um, I just thought it was fun. I thought he breathed new life into the, the yeah. series. I mean, the only thing I could say about that was just the was the promo pictures. Yeah. Just really, really reminded me of Courage the Cowardly Dog. <laughs> and then like seeing people like making memes and stuff of it was really sure. cool. That's like the furthest extent I know of. I season. I would say that the um, Roanoke season is worth checking out because I know it's on Netflix now. It's it's a quick watch. It's fun. Um, the premiere of American Horror Story was two nights ago. Cult mm -hmm. is the subtitle. The premiere is a mess, like a real mess, because it's um, it's uh, it's all political. It's all very much about the Trump mm -hmm. election, and um, it is some of extremely ham-fisted political commentary. Mm -hmm. It's it's um, they're going for something very different, which I admire. Um, they're cashing in on the creepy clown phenomenon, which is, I which think, is, funny. Yeah, which is just actually just surfaced again. Just as resurfaced yeah, again. I think it was in, I'm not sure if it's Cleveland, I forgot what city it was, but I was just reading earlier that the cops were. Oh, yeah. Like, they, they, but they were tying, people were tying the red balloons. People, well, okay. So people were tying the red balloons to, like, uh, sewer line, like, to sewer things. And. <laughs> Cops were like afraid or kind of taking it really seriously. Sure. That because you never know. Yeah. I mean, which is good to be safe, I guess. But it's kind of just crazy. And so there's a bunch of pictures online of like released by like media, like like actual news sources with like the red balloons tied to the, the That's sewer grates. Fantastic. So like people, I mean, <laughs> it's just really really cool. Well, they they've certainly managed to. Whether this was, I, I assume, since this production takes a long time, this is a response to the last wave of um, creepy clown stuff, and then now it's coming out, and you know, kind of just it's all kicked over again. But they just got lucky. Yeah, kind of just serendipitous kind of thing. Yeah, the clowns, uh, the clowns are creepy in this, and they work. I think for what they're trying to do, I have no idea where they're going with it. It just, it just, just looks like a mess, and it's got. Um, like callbacks to Freak Show in it because the the big creepy clown from that Twisty is mm -hmm. in it. It's just I highly recommend at least watching the first episode because it's um, it's definitely different and yeah. it's definitely very politically charged with the climate of today, which is interesting. And I've read that Ryan Murphy said that there is going to be no supernatural stuff this oh, season so, at all, which is really cool because I think a lot of like my favorite. 
horror things or mm -hmm. suspense things are like when there is no supernatural yeah. elements to it. I agree. There's a sense of almost like a sense of realness, like where it's slightly possible where it can happen. Yeah. And I think that just really if, makes it a lot scarier. Or yeah, I agree. If I had to pick a subgenre of horror that was my favorite, it would most likely be like the slasher genre. Yeah, I, for me, it's slasher, and then completely. Opposite end, yeah. like haunting and possession. Sure, like my second, yeah, like, just, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think that's actually probably the way I would go too. But like, you know, my favorite movie is Texas Chainsaw Massacre, uh, favorite movie of all time. I think I said that in the last one. That is, there's no supernatural at all. Yeah, in that. So the original Texas Chainsaw Massacre and Halloween were like my introductions to horror, as well as the Exorcist. Mm -hmm. So I think that kind of really was like the climate where I. Sure. Driven me, but like the funny little funny little thing with The Exorcist was, I first watched it when I was like five. Yeah. And it was my favorite movie, where <laughs> I would watch, over and over and over and over again. Right. Because I had no idea what was going on. Sure. Except, this girl throws up on these people, <laughs> which is hilarious. hilarious. Yeah, and then just like, <laughs> the the scene where, she twists her head around, and everything mm. just like smiles like. Thought it was hilarious <laughs> as a kid. Then I got a little older, like right. nine, ten, and then I was absolutely terrified. Around that time too, I was I was in Catholic school for the first time. I played in Catholic sure. school, so I started learning what everything was. Yeah, before I didn't know. And then so <laughs> going back and watching it, again, I was like horrified. Of where course. I was like, yeah. I don't want to be this little girl. <laughs> and but yeah, so that's a good little side story. I think that's fantastic. Um, yeah, and then, you know, talking about Halloween, I feel like, you know, that series got, it started out so strong and so, you know, potent, so powerful, and then they started introducing, like, supernatural elements to yeah. it, and just, like... Just lost. Drew, and which you can also say for the Jason movies, yeah, too, yeah, like, that, that really kind of went down. Um, anyway, so, Supernatural is all over the, our movie of this week, uh... Nightmare on Elm Street 3 Dream Warriors, um, the third installment of the uh, Nightmare on Elm Street franchise. Um, in my opinion, a as good as the first one. I think so. I, I, I think it's safe to say that we can omit two from the story. Two, yeah. Two was, Wes Craven didn't really have any involvement yeah. in it. It's a strange movie. It yeah. doesn't really, and I don't think... Um, it's really considered canon yeah, as because, far as... Because, I mean, like, what? what's the intern? I can't believe her name is escaping me, but she died in two, and now she's back in three? Yeah. Yeah, and it's just kind of like... Yeah, it's just... It... Um, no, it's a... a Never on Elm Street Part 2 is interesting from the... the um, Position of that there's a there's and it's well documented at this point. There's a ton of uh, homosexual subtext in the movie, which is um, is really interesting. It's interesting to watch. Um, it's funny because it was apparently all put in like without studio knowledge. So it's interesting in that um, in that respect and the the way that it plays around with gender roles as far as the the young man kind of being the final girl is interesting. Yeah. Um, the problem is, is that the movie is also not very good. It's just, it's kind of boring and, and yeah. it doesn't have a lot of, um, there's some really good special effects work towards the end, uh, but it's not, not like a great movie yeah, <laughs> by think, any stretch. And I would think so because I really don't remember much of it except yeah. that it was bad. Yeah. And I remember thinking it was bad and I didn't like it as a kid, like, yeah. or like as a... You know, adolescent. It just weirdly, it's just not very interesting. It's just not because it's about this, it's about Freddy coming out of this kid, mm -hmm. like literally coming out. It's, it's about coming out, essentially. Yeah. <laughs> but oh, yeah. um, to tie it back, but it's just, it's just kind of boring. Yeah. It's just not, it's not very well done and it's uh, kind of dull. But um, they made so much money off of it because uh, people. Wanted to see more yeah, Freddy, Freddy yeah. Krueger, which is understandable that they decided to do part three uh, with Wes Craven. I think producing this time, and I believe he had a hand in the screenplay. Um, yeah, I know he was mainly more into it. I think because he didn't going back to, and it's killing me that I can't remember her name. And I just, I literally just you talking about Nancy? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, um, yeah. Um, uh, Heather Langenkamp. Yeah. 
and he didn't want her to die. Mm -hmm. I mean, so he just brought her back, yeah. and he's like, oh, she's back. She died, but she's back. <laughs> um, yeah, which is great, because she's a, it's a good character, yeah. and she's good. Um, I will say, this is uh, the first time I've watched part three. This is going to be a running theme on this podcast. This is the first time I've watched part three sober. Um, as I am myself recently sober. So this is, uh, <laughs> it was interesting to watch it with fresh eyes. Uh, Heather Langenkamp, um, not a great actress. <laughs> just, just well, okay. really is not a, yeah. not a good actress. <laughs> to be kind of fair, I think there's a lot of not good acting yeah. in, in and that's, this movie. And that's true. And I, well, I think, I think the part is, is because I didn't feel that way about her in part one. And okay. I think it's because she's better at playing a teenager, or if that makes sense. Yeah, because yeah. in this one, she's grown up a little bit because she's got the white streak in her hair. Yeah. You can tell that means she's an adult, um, and she's trying to be more of a professional businesswoman, like yeah. whatever. And it just she just seems like a teenager yeah. trying to be trying to be. Yeah. It feels like. Um, Almost like a uh, school play or something at times, and but you know the parts where she's scared and like fighting Freddy, like with the demon snake and all that. Those parts she's great. It's just like her actual like dialogue scenes yeah, are not, not good. good. Well, that's very true. But can we can we just say that the the, the Freddy snake like is a lot of. Freddy Krueger Tremors. Oh, very much right? so. Right? Like, it's... Yeah. I remember watching it, and it was just... Oh. Tremors. It's very much, yeah, with it, like, coming yeah. up, and, yeah, it's very Tremors. Uh, and very cool looking, I think, yeah, too. Yeah, I, I liked it. It was good. Um, I like it's all slimy and yeah. gross, and, and apparently they had to put... Uh, slime all over it, because it looked like just a big cock coming out of yeah. the ground. Yeah, yeah. Well, I was going to say... It's still it's like, still pretty phallic. Yeah, yeah I mean, it still looks like a big old dick. Yeah, but uh, which is you know fine. <laughs> to add layers, um, that whole sequence, and really, um, as I said, Nightmare on Elm Street Part Three, I think is great. I think it's a, yeah, I, a classic. It's one of my most memorable in like yeah. the franchise. Yeah, oh it, yeah, in, in all of franchises, I would say it's like top tier sequel. Um, the first 20 minutes of that movie uh, are f fantastic, yeah, I unimpeachable. Think it's great. Like it, the movie slows down a little bit towards the end, and there's, there's we'll get to it. But the first 20 minutes of that are fantastic. Yeah, I remember the was the paper mache stuff. Yeah, and made like just that scene because even though it's not horror, like something, it's just really, really I don't know, it's just really disturbing to like, like just like the the visuals and like the yeah, like the hands of the it just looks gross to me. Yeah, like all the close ups looks yeah. like. Gross and it's like her kind of just trying to stay up yeah. and everything, and then going into like the dream sequence mm -hmm. and everything. The dream sequence is fantastic. Yeah, like all the uh, like hanging bodies and, and the like, creepy ass little kid, the little kid that turns into like a corpse. Yeah, uh, it's it's great. Yeah, it's, it's that whole sequence is uh, is fantastic, um, and then it ends with Freddy coming out of the yeah, which is honestly probably one of my favorite favorite scenes. And in like this, like, this whole franchise in general, mm. like I mean, like looking at it back now, it's it's funny, like like yeah. Uh, but just just uh, her like in her like dream sequence, kind of like freaking out, like Freddy's attacking her, yeah. And then it pans out into like what's happening in real life, yeah. Or like in the woken state is her slitting her wrists, yeah. Which is just which is, was just really, really cool. Oh, I mean, it's like, fantastic. It was great. And then it was like it was the perfect transition to psych work. Yeah, you know I mean? like, yeah they just get perfect. right into it. Yeah, it's the, the pacing in that opening is fantastic. They get right into it. Doesn't feel rushed at all. Doesn't feel rushed. It just feels like well plotted. Um, also, worthy of note, that is Patricia Arquette, who would go on to win an Oscar uh, just a couple of years ago for Boyhood. Which uh, was one of the most overrated movies I've ever seen. Uh, and she was good in it, though. I will say that it's very long. <laughs> it's a very long movie. Um, it felt like the ten years that they took to shoot that movie. It, you, you feel it. When you you felt each year. Feel each year. <laughs> <clears throat> that being said, that's my my hot Oscar take. Um, Patricia Arquette's fantastic in it, and she deserved the Oscar she won. She was really good. Uh, but it's just I love seeing actors like that that go on to like 
bigger and better things, like seeing well, the first stuff. That, and it's all a lot of times it's in horror movies. Yeah, which is cool. then, yeah, we were like what we were talking about last time with yes. uh, Texas Chainsaw Massacre mm -hmm. and a handful of really mm -hmm. good. And this movie has two as well, because this movie has Patricia Arquette, uh, who won an Oscar, and Lawrence Fishburne yeah. in a smaller role, who was uh, nominated at least once for the I Can Tina Turner movie. Oh, yeah, yeah, um, yeah. What's Love Got to Do With It? Um, so that's cool. Um, anyway, she's great in that scene. She faints. That's yeah. a, an excellent movie faint, uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, which is really cool. Um, yeah, and then they just get right into the plot, which is cool. And that introduces one of the big touch stones of the Nightmare on Elm Street universe, which is Weston Hills, which is the, the psychiatric yeah. uh, institute, um, which they carry that all the way through to Freddy vs. Jason, which I think is kind of cool, at least of that movie, to call back. Yeah, to yeah. Um, and also, uh, that's one of, one of the reasons why... Nightmare on Elm Street Part 3 is so important is that it really establishes a lot of what we know about Nightmare on Elm about, like the, yeah, about yeah. the franchise, about the universe. Because, I mean, the first one is obviously sets the groundwork uh, as far as like Freddy being, um, you know, child molester and he was killed by the parents and all that. Spoiler alert, I guess. I mean, <laughs> we're going to assume you've seen that movie at this point if you're here. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> 30 years too late. Uh, yeah, you know. You had your chance, I guess. Uh, but part three goes into more of of that, and it establishes the canon of like the nun being uh, trapped in the the, oh, yeah. the psychiatric ward, uh, the son of a hundred maniacs, and and all that. Which I uh, the hypnosil, which is a big part of this one, and yeah, carries so on. on. Yeah. So I think that that is. Um, what makes it such an essential sequel is that it um, really it further it further uh, extrapolates and uh, cements the groundwork of the original, which is yeah. cool. I, I, it's definitely, I say, it's the most memorable one. I remember I watched it. I think the, before rewatching it now, the last time I watched it was six so. Uh, 14 years ago. Mm -hmm. I remember a lot of like the key parts to oh, it. yeah. And I can't say the same like like the first one. I only remember like I remember less of the first one even though I liked it a lot. Yeah. And then all of the other ones kind of just like pushed out of my head sure. completely. Well, after this one, the franchise gets very silly. <laughs> yeah, that, yeah, it's like that horror comedy kind yeah, of. Yeah, um, this is the one that really hits the the tone right on the bullseye. Yeah. of because there are some some funny parts, so there's it gets a little silly with some of the kills, a yeah. little bit like the TV and yeah. you're on prime time, bitch. Is <laughs> a little. It's that's just that, a touch over the into the silly territory, but it gets a little more than a touch. Well, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but it's still great. Yeah, it's, it's still good. really good, and, and um, what's important is that Freddy is still scary in this yeah, one. That's true. He's yeah. still really scary yeah. in this one. I um, mean, it goes from here he's still a frightening killer. Yes. To towards the end, the uh, got your nose. Yeah, the got your nose in Freddy vs. Jason, and you know, uh, using the power glove in Part Six to play. I forgot the video about the power game. glove. Oh, yeah. it's not good. It's it's yeah. a really a low watermark of the series. Yeah. Although at the time, I when I as a child saw that and was desperately wanting a power glove for my Nintendo system, I thought it was the coolest thing in the world. I recognize now it was very very silly. Yeah. What's well, that? Uh, completely veering off track, but wasn't there a movie where this kid played games he's really good and like the whole basis of it was a power glove in the end well, yeah like the, the game yeah tournament. Oh, the wizard yeah yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, wizard or the wizard so, 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 something yeah, like that I, yeah I, I uh, it's my... Fred, Fred Savage yeah. and uh, Jenny Lewis who would go on to be in their band Rilo Kiley uh, if you're oh. familiar with I don't know I don't know yeah. what, your, what your indie rock cred is but uh, she's a very good singer huh. yeah um, and, and just remember being obsessed with that movie when yes. I was like 10. Oh, sure, and me I too. I loved it. I, and I didn't even know a power glove was a thing. I oh, thought yeah. they made it for the movie. <laughs> and then I found out it was a real thing. Oh, yeah. And I was like, well, that, the, the wizard is very much, uh, was funded by Nintendo. And uh, was, because they also debuted uh, Super Mario 3 in that movie. Oh, before cool. they before they marketed it, and believe me, it worked on me. I would me. imagine. I mean, it worked hard on me. Yeah, I, I think that works. It's li literally. I remember after watching it, I like dug up my old Super Nintendo 
and replayed our uh, Mario three. Absolutely, so it definitely worked. Yeah. Oh yeah. Like I, I worked on me. I was, I was. I'm older than you. I am who they were marketing that movie to at the time, and I was fanatic about getting Super Mario three. I think I whipped my parents to death about it till I got it. So, so I can understand. Um, yeah, I mean that was great. Um, anyway, Freddy. Um, the kills in this movie are fantastic yeah. for the most part. We were talking about like memorable imagery and memorable stuff. Um, the marionette thing where he rips the... Oh, yeah. yeah where yeah. the guy's walking around with the, the marionette stuff. That's one that stuck with me for a really long time. I thought that was incredibly creepy. Um, I, I do feel like in writing the screenplay, that's something that they had the idea for and worked backwards. Because, yeah, um, yeah. like, why would a person be a marionette yeah, <laughs> in a movie just, unless like, you're going to use it? Yeah, because, like, that's. Be, or a marionette operator. I don't um, know how much, like, that's a, a dream of kids or yeah, like teenagers. That's, that's kind of a. It's one of those things that. Uh, it's a plot point that doesn't hold a lot of water. <laughs> but it's, it's pretty <laughs> but damn it's, good. But it, it's so cool yeah. that it doesn't really matter. Like, it's. it's um, uh, you know, they put that in there obviously so they could do like some kind of marionette effect and eh, whatever, it's fine. Yeah. It's not the worst kill in the movie by any stretch. Uh, and okay. it's really cool. And the stop the stop motion uh, Freddy jumping down from the uh, yeah. the thing is it's all it's all very cool. It's, good. Yeah, it's awesome. <laughs> it's definitely one of the better ones, like I think uh like it sadly I, I completely forgot about that. Yeah. That one until I rewatched it, mainly because of like some of the, I mean, come on, we can say it was the wizard one was it's terrible. It, it was terrible. It was. <laughs> I remember I could not like, not laugh. I, I, oh. I it was slapping so hard. Even as a younger, when I first watched it, it was just so funny. Of all of the things that they could have done with that, they picked the most uninteresting and the yeah. most silly, and it just it it looks bad, especially now. Because um, the kid kind of looks like Harry Potter now. A lot, yeah. <laughs> and, I mean, just like yeah, like, yeah, Harry. like I said on uh, on Snapchat. Yeah. Uh, the kid, the kid kind of looks like Harry Potter, and the the wizardy special effect is not great. Um, <laughs> it, it literally looked like they took Raiden's lightning thing from Mortal Kombat Two, the video game, and just put it to the movie. <laughs> <laughs> well, what's so what's frustrating about that one is that they have this cool chair. Yeah, yeah that does. They, they could have done something with that. Have the chair get put back. He, he blows up the chair as like his, you know, yeah. I've overcome my adversity. Um, I, the chair should have been how the attack gets killed instead of Freddy yeah. just picking him up and stabbing him. Yeah. Which is just, I mean, it's fine, I guess, but it's just not. It's very anticlimactic yeah. after something that's very silly. And it comes right after what I consider to be the best kill in all of the franchise, which is Taryn, the mm -hmm. punk rock girl, yeah. getting the yeah. <clears throat> Freddy, the heroin fingered Freddy. Yeah, like that that one, that kill is amazing, great. I remember it, that one's the one I remember the yes. most. But, <laughs> but, I'm just gonna say, I remember being, even being younger, thinking like, what the hell is wrong with you? It's like, you can be anything <laughs> in this dream world, and you're literally going to be what half of the freaking you are, like, like in that generation, the 80s, you mean, yeah. like, half of what the females are that are into, like, the hair glam metal right. days, you know what I mean? Like, you literally are you. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, like that's what you chose, and you're gonna, you're gonna fight this freaking demonic pedophile slasher entity with two switchblades the switchblades are so comically tiny yeah too yeah they're not even like good like, like freddy's, switch freddy's pinkies freaking yeah. slashers that thing is bigger that's a weird choice like, i will admit um the it, kill's great the, the kill, kill is amazing the kill is fantastic Perfect. with the the track marks that yeah. start you know yeah. sucking or whatever that's it's it's Just, visceral and cool it makes you kind of feel Gross. Oh, it makes you like, feel gross. Uh, you can kind of feel that you have them a little bit. Yes, it, yeah. it's such a cool, uh, just all all of it and how it ties into her character is perfect. Yeah, that's great, and awesome. But like, I just I remember the just tiny little switch, switch blades, blades do make it a little silly. Which, uh, like stab. It's like you won't even kill a normal person with that. <laughs> how it's, do you get uh, flesh wounds only yeah. with that? But it does. You know, it's 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 what makes her feel badass. I yeah, guess. and 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 it's kind of. 
I mean, even though it wasn't for them, it's kind of like now what we'd be watching. It's kind of like a time piece. Like it's cool because yeah. that that look and everything was huge then. Oh, yeah. You know what I mean? So the it's hair like, is very cool. Yeah, like so it. it was it was great. Like the costume being perfect. Yes. Yeah. But it's just <laughs> her as the character. I'm like, come on, man. Also, it also like the it's very clearly shot on a movie set, and there it looks like they're outside of like an old jazz bar or something. Yeah. I, I don't. I, if that's supposed to be a punk rock club, I don't know if anyone involved with the movie had ever been to a punk rock yeah, club because it looks like a New Orleans that, blues. Club. Yeah, that, honestly, that completely like that completely went over my head. But <laughs> thinking back to yeah, that is very true. Uh, and it's just very clearly on a movie set, which is fine. The whole movie is, but um, so that those the the kills are great. Um, really, all of the. All of the kids are good. In yeah, it. yeah. It's the 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 ensemble cast is good. I yeah, feel like. I think so. Um, and a couple of them are in the next one or in part four, the ones that survive. Um, part four, we'll get to at a later date. Uh, it's not a very good movie. It's okay, um, but uh, the the acting is all good. Um, the only acting, I mean, I I, I kind of ragged on on Heather Langenkamp. I I don't I like her as Nancy and I think she's great and she's even better when we get further down the line into New Nightmare I think mm -hmm. she's fantastic in that um, there's just some some bits that are off in her performance on this the doctor in the movie Dr. Neil yeah. is like that is just the most useless character yeah it's far and few I get actually like actually angry at a yeah. movie at a character like where it's just specifically where they come back on and then just aggravates me yeah. to where I want to, like, cause physical harm to them. Yes, that's a character. He's so boring. He's yeah. just it's just he's a it's a boring character. He's not well written, and really, he's not that necessary. Yeah. I feel like they could have condensed the script or done something with it to have Nancy being the one that's taking care of these kids. Yeah, it just it just feels like an extra step, and he's kind of a weenie. And yeah. he doesn't do anything. I mean, he he's at the he fights at the end. Um, Wait, you, I, to, that that can be omitted. Yeah, completely. It, it would be just fine. There's just say I, I also am not wild about what they do with John Saxon's character, the her father. Um, I don't yeah. like because he's cool in the first one. John Saxon in general is a you know a veteran of genre movies. Yeah, and. Uh, it's just always a welcome presence in horror movies. They kind of just make him the sidekick in this movie, yeah, which I don't love. Um, I like it. I like his whole drunk scene at the bit when he comes in at Little Nemo's bar, by the way, which is a, <laughs> a reference to the comic, which is all about Dreamland. Yeah, and everything. I think that's kind of kind of a nice little touch, a little Easter egg there. Mm. But um, I, I don't like what they do with his character. Eh, it's fine. It's a little boring, but. Um, just anyway, that whole part is just kind of unnecessary. And they they have him, um, I guess his whole, uh, Dr. Neal's whole connection to this is uh, he's the one that sees the creepy nun yeah. walking around, which as we, the big twist at the end of the movie is that that's Freddy's mom as a ghost, Amanda Krueger, uh, walking around, which is cool. I'm fine with that, but I feel like all of that could have been done to Nancy. Yeah, it did true. not need that guy. Yeah, um, there doesn't ruin the movie by any stretch. It's just like my least favorite part of, <laughs> of the movie. And it's actually the same here. It's, it's that. And I, I think it's it's you know the, it's implied. I, they never go really into it, but it's implied that that he and Nancy like start fucking at one point. I think, which I think is also another thing that's kind of just not necessary, yeah. and it kind of screeches the movie to a halt. Um, just just for a little bit because there's not a lot of it, but yeah. it's just like it's just why why are we even getting into that? Like yeah. that, that's not necessary, especially because he's like clearly 15 to 20 years older than her. So and he just sucks. And he just sucks. Yeah. He's just like a lame dude. Um, that they just have like steal shit from a church at one point. That's like his biggest contribution is stealing a cross and the holy water. Um, yeah, I, I mean, li literally. Leatherface and Screech is a better love story. Than yes. <laughs> I, will I will take that over yeah. this any day. Um, and that's, you know, if you want to talk about the ending the uh, while we're talking about it, the Freddy's skeleton coming to life damn near sinks the movie. I, it's so dumb. And it, and, and it, it looks terrible, too. Yeah, it, it's bad. It, it's like a notch... 
a small notch better than the dancing skeleton in the original Thirteen Ghosts. Yeah, and not and I, honestly, I would take that one over it because it, yeah. it just it's got that real like uh, map look where you can tell it was like added in later. Yeah. And, and and I point that out like there's nothing wrong with having bad special effects in the movie, but the special effects in Part Three in general are really good. Yeah. I think especially yeah. when because it, it was made on a budget. I think. I think so. Even like, I mean. I think they were really good, especially if you go back to the movies that were around that yeah. time. Like it was good. Yeah. I, re I remember seeing it younger and like it looking way, way more terrifying. And then oh, yeah. remember watching like specifically going back to the first scene, like the just just the the handle of the sink mm -hmm. turning into the yeah. claws and coming out. Like I remember seeing that as a kid and being ter like yeah. absolutely terrified. I remember because. I hated going to my great grandmother's house <laughs> after that because she had the same the, the same kind of twists sink know? set up. Yeah, wow. and it was like I would not. I specifically remember like having to be there for a summer and watching that and literally had one of those creepy ass old bathtubs too, mm -hmm. and like with a kind of see throughy curtains. I remember sure. going in there like having to open <laughs> them and then literally using a towel or whatever I can to kind of push the water open because yeah. I did not want to touch them. Yeah. So I mean like it was, it was great. Um, it's a, a testament to practical effects and how good they look on camera. I, uh, I recently rewatched uh, Freddy vs. Jason for the first time in a while. Um, and it's like early 2000s, 2002, 2003, and the, the CGI in it looks terrible. I mean, yeah. it doesn't look, I'm not, it's not the worst I've ever seen, but it, it just looks really bad. It yeah, looks it's, animated and f fake. Yeah, it's, I don't remember much from Freddy vs. Jason, just a couple key, like the gotcha notes. Yeah. The, wasn't there a scene where there was like, Tanks where they cut off and the shot yeah. hit Jason. Yeah, there are there are parts. Freddy vs. Jason, on the whole, is fine. It's not a bad movie. It's I think as good as we were ever going to get. True. Of of the two of them, there are some um, screenplays that you can find online that are really cool. Yeah. Uh, that people have written over the years because the the Freddy vs. Jason concept is one they've kind of bandied about for a long time. Yeah. I, I um, think. Uh, my favorite things about Freddy vs. Jason aren't even Freddy vs. Jason, though. Really? Like, like, or I mean, not that movie. Like, I love that movie so much because of, like, the fiasco that happened when I went to go watch it. Really? I mean, like, we'll say, go, go, like, my aunt is the best person to watch any kind of horror movies sure. with because she screams so loud, right. like... It scares you because it comes out of nowhere because like she scares you. It's like a jump scare because yeah. when she and, and it's completely natural to her. Like yeah. she's not doing it on purpose. Like it's just, just the way a, she is. A natural reaction. Yeah. And yeah. she does it to every movie at the same time. Like <laughs> that she seen. Like especially The Exorcist. She's like completely terrified of it, but she watches it every time it's on with us because <laughs> we. I don't know why, but my family loves that movie. Sure. Right. And. um Catholics, yeah, <laughs> which is like, yeah, which is funny because, like, most of my family actually are Catholic, sure, which, which yeah, is like, I have no doubt, yeah, which is, which is funny. Uh, but, um, but yeah, so when we were watching that movie, um, like, planets aligned perfectly where it was the gotcha no scene, yeah, which is comes out of the magazine, yeah, which is not uh, like, I mean, it's, I mean, it's supposed to be a jump scare, but it's yeah. not the best jump scare, no, to be fair. It's, it's, it's not. Scary. It's pretty far from it. Yeah. And, like, I mean, you can kind of see it from, like, a mile away, too. Yeah. You know what I mean? But that scene happens, and as soon as his hand shoots out of the magazine, my aunt, for some reason, is at the last... She's at the last seat closest to the aisle, sure. which is very rare for her to begin with. So, already, that's weird. Right. But as that scene happens... Just so how there was a woman walking down the aisle <laughs> with a large popcorn. I see where this is headed. And a large soda. <laughs> and as soon as that happens, my aunt screams and fills the theater up like with this howl, right? <laughs> this lady gets scared as we do, shoots her popcorn everywhere, her drink flies out, her hand goes everywhere. Fantastic. And she looks at my aunt like she wants to fight because she <laughs> thinks my aunt did it on purpose that's amazing and there was this whole thing and uh people that worked there had to come and kind of defuse it like 
a little bit, and then the movie kept on going. So it was so that just happening is some, one of my favorite things because of that. That movie allowed it to happen, and I still bring it up to this day. That movie brought that yeah. joy into so your world. That and then the Easter egg, or not even an Easter egg, but just like the the hints of Jason goes to hell and yeah. Freddy. Like that is one of my favorite scenes yes. in horror in general. Yeah. That small. melted my brain yeah. when like, I saw it because completely out of nowhere, never expected it, uh, and, and that's actually made what. Just that one scene makes Jason Goes to Hell my favorite Jason. Yeah. Like, movie, like, my favorite Friday the 13th movie. And that's my favorite scene that deals with Freddy vs. Jason. Oh, it's, it's, it's the promise that is in that one sequence yeah. at the end of Jason Goes to Hell is better than the movie. Yeah, it's better sure. than the actual movie. I remember seeing uh, Freddy vs. Jason and being pretty, like, disappointed. I it's, mean, it was good, but, like, I was, I don't know, I was. I didn't know what I was expecting. I really yeah. didn't know what to expect from it, but at the same time, like, it's it's it very much smells of like studio interference, and there was a lot of like yeah. both you know because they had to negotiate between studios to make it. It it, it it's too much hurdles. It's too it. many hurdles. It's the it, it really is the best we were ever gonna get. Of yeah, that, I, I, that I, I agree. And um, the fact that it happened at all is in it, in and of itself kind of a miracle. Yeah, it, it, it was. But, it was good. It'd be, like, I, I don't think, as a, all in all, I don't think that was a bad thing. No, it's it not. And it's, and it's a good movie, and it, it still mostly holds up. There are parts in it that are really good. I wish, though, talking about practical effects and stuff, I wish that it had been made a little earlier. Yeah. So CGI wasn't an option. Yeah. Because I just think it would have been cooler. I'm just, in general, not a fan of CGI yeah. and horror movies. I mean, even, even like the better CGI stuff, like, yeah. like even recently, like we were talking a while back about the. the Alien movie? Yeah, oh god. Yeah, I finally yeah. I finally watched it and I can definitely see yeah, that. The, the CGI, CGI in that is borderline yeah. criminal. I'm also not saying this, I don't think this is like the hottest take in the world or like <laughs> like a real like revolutionary thing. I don't think a lot of people like CGI. Yeah. I just think it's easier and cheaper. Yeah, and I, when and they I think do it. it's harder for movies to freaking hold up. Yes. You know, in oh, the long in the, in the macro perspective, like I think it's yeah. harder for movies to stand the test of time yes. with CGI, because then you, yeah. you can really see like, I mean, even stuff that might look great then yeah. just looks absolutely terrible. Like, oh, you know, God, like, yeah. I mean, like, because even go like going from like left field, I mean, like the Godzilla movies. Yeah, I think like like the the cheesy, yeah, you know, old ones hold up a hell of a lot better than the yes. Godzilla two thousand. You yeah. know what I mean? Well, it's I was I said this to my wife about um, Freddy vs. Jason. The two things that date that movie so specifically are the special effects yeah. and also the new metal uh, yeah. soundtrack. <laughs> yeah, that's just very of that of that era, you know. Yeah, which which me being like like that 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 era was like my adolescence. Sure. So I remember watching. I was like, yeah, this is amazing. <laughs> Which kind of goes to the how part three is like the whole glam yes. rock punk kind of eighties. Dawkins, yeah, yeah. Dawkins fingerprints are all over Freddy, oh, yeah. Freddy, uh, part three, and it's uh, it's fantastic. If you haven't seen the music video of uh, Dream Warriors, actually, for Dokken, I, I actually, oh, have that. do yourself a favor because they use because Freddie's in it, yeah, and they use like the band and Freddie, and it, really cool. it, it ends with Freddie waking up, and the, the 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 band has been his nightmare. Yeah, oh, it's great. That's awesome. It's I, I got to watch it. I didn't, and honestly, I recognize Dokken from the beginning, mm -hmm. mainly because Through like fire. because like my my I grew up. I grew up like precedented, like in my high school, I looked like a high schooler from the 80s. <laughs> like literally where all I would listen to was like 80s metal, mm -hmm. right? So like I knew Dawkins because of that. Yeah. And like, cause I pretty much stole my dad's like cassette collection and CD collection. Excellent. So like, I recognized it from there, but I had no idea that the relationship went further than just it being like a cameo. Like yeah. In the movie. Oh yeah, they're man, they're all over that. Just well, just as far as the soundtrack. Yeah, that's really cool though. Oh, it's great. Um, uh, oh god, I forgot what I was gonna say. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's gonna happen a lot yeah. between you and I in this podcast in general. Yeah. Um, Really forgot what I was going to say. Actually, oh. where, where were we even at in the story of, of this movie? I think we're just talking about the kills. Oh, I mean, okay. You know, as, as far as the movie itself, 
Um, there's not a lot to it, really. Yeah. I mean, it's 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 just them trying to fight Freddy again. Freddy's come back, and he's you sure. know do that. This they it gets a little silly towards the end when they you know all of the stuff about Freddy's bones have to be. Uh, yeah. I mean, all that stuff is just it's it's just a you just. At, at a certain point, you need an end point for a movie, so they have to do an action yeah. to end the movie. Yeah, <laughs> it was not a good action for that one. Well, it's just dumb. I yeah. mean, or it, it doesn't make like just a ton of sense. Like yeah. it's it's um, uh, it's just a, a narrative device. They just yeah. have to okay, well, we'll do this, and then in the next movie, we'll have to do another thing to get rid of him. And yeah. the next, you know, uh, splashing him with holy water, the bones with holy water. It, it's cool. The effect where the lights coming out of him uh, is cool. But, oh, speaking of practical effects, this is the first movie where we get him showing the souls of the kids oh, yeah. in yeah, yeah, his yeah. chest. That part that is cool. Yeah. And they've used, they use that in, in, I think, a lot of the movies. Yeah. Uh, at least that the next really couple. Cool. And uh, that part's really awesome. Yeah. Um, but um, as far as that, it's a pretty simple narrative. It's just like Freddy shows up in the dreams and kills the people and... Uh, and that's it. Yeah. And then they, you know, uh, Nancy comes in and she's she's got the keys to it. And uh, <laughs> yeah, I would also like to point out, just uh, as far as talking about sillier elements of this movie, um, the TV murder where it picks up the girl. And there, I would like to say that the I'd like to point out that the two cameos in this movie are Dick Cavett and Zsa Zsa Gabor, mm -hmm. which uh, for. Uh, an 80s movie, I guess, is appropriate, but I think those are the lamest. Uh, those cameos are not exciting the teenagers. I don't feel like I don't feel like the Zsa Zsa Gabor cameo is gonna really yeah. <laughs> excite I, the children of the 80s or today for that. Matter. Yeah, I, I think they could have just kept the duck and stuff and sure. they put them in there. It probably would have been cooler. <laughs> would have been fantastic. Yeah, um, the that that. The whole special effect too is really cool. Where he comes out of the TV and, and yeah. all that, I like that. Uh, I mean, it, it reminded me like kind of like it's kind of Tim Burton esque. Yes. Oh, very yeah, much like, so. By a lot. Yeah, like this, yeah. this would I could I'd be seeing that and like it could be in any one of his freaking any one of his movies. Yeah. No, so, I love that actually. Yeah. I hadn't thought about that, but you're right. It is very Burton esque. Yeah. Um, overall, I think it's it's a good movie. Uh, does I guess what we're trying to to end the the podcast with? Do we think this movie deserves to be made? Like, is this movie better than a new idea? I think. Uh, grand scheme. I think that's hard. I, I I will answer first if you don't mind. Yeah, go ahead. A hundred percent, it does. Yeah, yeah. I'll... I think it's I think it's a great movie. Just on its face, I think it's a great movie. Um, but also, it's a great sequel. It, yeah, it's a it, sequel. it does what a sequel is supposed to do. It it, it it furthers the story. It establishes more groundwork. Yeah, I mean, like like we said earlier, like the the sanitarium where it's at. I mean, it becomes yeah. an ongoing theme within the whole franchise. Yes, so it's true. Like as I think, it definitely does. Cause I I think it should should have been the part two. Yeah. Oh, for sure. You know what I mean? Like yeah. so, I definitely think it's as far as like in the nightmare on Elm Street world, like world the universe it's yeah. probably if it stopped there it would have been great it would yeah have been so oh, even, sure. even like going further i mean because at this point like you just want more freddy yeah so, so of course uh, at this point you just want more freddy yeah so like so yeah i mean <laughs> so the other ones are, are cool too but like uh, yeah, yeah, this one is this one is the only one. I would say that the first one, part three, and New Nightmare are the ones that I would consider essential yeah. elements of the franchise. Yeah. Uh, New Nightmare we'll cover in a later episode because that's a fantastic movie. But um, I feel like part three, beyond being essential to the story and to the narrative of Freddy Krueger, I think it's just a good movie. That I think good. it's just it's well done. I think it's interesting too. It was uh, director is, is a guy named Chuck Russell. Um, who's done some stuff, but he directed this. The f next movie that he directed was the 80s remake of The Blob, but, which is one of my favorite, favorite yeah. remakes of yeah, all I time. So. I, was, um, so I remember I remember kind of going off like on that a little bit. I remember watching The Blob being young, and that movie and the remake of like, what was it? That one of the thing. Not yeah. the remake, but that one of the, what was it, Kurt Russell? Yeah, the thing. Yeah, the thing, yeah. Those two movies. Like terrified oh, my yeah, as a kid, yeah. like 
I remember them being like, would go back to a, like when I would be going to sleep. Oh, or sure. Kind of just like it would kind of just, just, just the scenes. You see the body parts in the blob and everything. Sure. I remember yeah. it was like, oh my god. It was, we we will cover the blob. Yeah, we have to because sure. it's one of my all time favorite. Yeah. Because I saw favorite. the that the eighties version before I saw me like, too. like the original the one. 60s, yeah. And I remember like. I was like, what the hell? Oh, like, it's... Like, like, how do you get that, like, the remake from this? Like, so, like, the... I mean, the writers for that movie just did an amazing yeah. job. And it's, like, the same thing with uh, 13 Ghosts, which mm. I definitely want to do in the future. Sure. Too. Like, seeing that one first and then going back years, years later and watching the original, I was like, how the hell did they come up with the storyline yeah. the, on that one? The, the special effects work um, in the Blob remake, and I'll, I'll do some more research on this, but I, I feel like, or from what I remember... That movie was made to show off that special effect houses work, oh. like because they. I mean, it would. I guess that I sense. think that's right. I mean, I mean, that wasn't the only reason it was made, but, but that a big was a part of it was that this company wanted to show off what they could do. If I'm correct on that, which I think I remember that yeah. being the case, like perfect advertising. Oh, it's and it's so good. The special mm -hmm. effects in that movie are incredible. Yeah, I think. Uh, and still really hold up. I, I watched that recently. Um, that's one I watch about once a year just because mm -hmm. I think it's cool. <laughs> I'm like that with their Tango sexually. Yeah. Um, Chuck Russell, and then after The Blob, he also directed The Mask, the Jim Carrey movie, which I think is a very strange yeah, turn. It is really uh, And going on that, like, that's, that is crazy. Yeah. I think uh, that's really weird. Yeah. I, also, Mask was like one of my childhood movies really? where I watched over and over and over and over. I That is one that I should probably see again because it is not one that I liked originally other than the fact that Cameron Diaz was super hot. Seriously, like I remember being a kid <laughs> and like seeing her in that movie and I was like, I don't know who this lady is, but I was like in love with oh that. Oh my god, she is. You look at her then and you look yeah, at her and, now. Or like just, just like in years after that, I remember... I remember remembering that person. I remember like oh this, was, this whole was amazing. I guess like when I got yeah. older, and I didn't know who it was. Yeah. Right. And there's years since I watched sure. it, and I mean, seeing Cameron Diaz and a bunch of stuff like yeah. Charlie's Angels and all that stuff around the time yeah. when I was younger, and then going back, it's like holy crap, that's Cameron Diaz. Yeah. Like how? Oh yeah. It was. She is stunning in that movie, and especially when you consider now, like I don't have a beef with Cameron Diaz. She's fine whatever it is but she looks now like someone that smokes a lot of cigarettes i don't know if that makes any sense you she just has a her face just looks weird oh, now. it kind of started to notice like what was it what movie was it uh there's something about mary like yeah like, that was kind of like the tipping where yeah it after was, that uh, it just really she started looking like that yeah I, again i have no issue with cameron diaz whatever she's fine you know it's true too come on guys <laughs> um so yeah, but anyway, this this uh, Nightmare on Elm Street three I think is is in the top tier of franchise sequels. It's in the top tier. I would put it top tier of sequels in general. Period. Yeah, I, I would definitely agree with that. Like yeah. I said, it was one of the only like where I remember parts of this movie even before, more sure. than the original. Like, yeah. Years. I mean, like it was a good ten plus, uh, probably about fourteen years yeah. that I last watched it, yeah. and I remembered a good amount. I mean, the kills. Oh, yeah. like, I remember a good amount of the kills. Yeah, which is kind of crazy because oh, yeah. like you don't really go around your years thinking about Nightmare on Elm Street in general. Well, you know, I do, but well, I mean, you're kind of different though. Like, <laughs> I mean, uh, the, well, you know, it's you you compare it when you compare it to the first one. The, the first one, the the blood fountain is cool, and then the, where the girl gets dragged up the wall. Yeah. Which All is, of that stuff. Which is, that's actually the one that stuck to me the most. Sure. Yeah, like, it's her that's being terrifying. Dragged. Yeah, like, yeah. I think that, that is, in the whole franchise, is, like, the most terrifying kill. It, it is. I, I really, I said earlier, the, the heroine thing is probably is probably my favorite yeah it would it's really probably both of those yeah. it goes back and forth the blood fountain is cool but it's a one yeah, it's that, kind of a one yeah, trick like for me the, it's not scary yeah, at all. Like it's I just kind of cool looking yeah i was i remember watching it because because i had watched my order part yeah. four i watched first yeah three and sure. then one and i remember seeing him like what the fuck did that come from <laughs> like i remember it was yeah. kind of about it yeah. but the her being dragged across i was like Still, yeah, is probably one oh, of the best moments scary. in this whole franchise. Yeah. So I think that's about it. Wrapping it up. Uh, oh, I, I did want to note too the the ending, uh, the light coming on in the paper mache house. Yeah. Is probably you know at the end of all the Freddy movies, there's the little hint that he's coming back. 
that's probably the best one. Yeah, I think. yeah, for sure. Because there's, there's like him like reflecting a fountain and a later one that's stupid, and they're all kind of dumb. But that one is really yeah. Good. That one's actually kind of haunting. It's kind of haunting, yeah. and it ties in, you know, yeah. with the whole thing. So it's just in general, this movie is really good. Yeah, I, it's definitely the, the high water mark for the franchise itself. I think this a new nightmare. Yeah. So. Uh, and I guess that's it, unless you have anything else to uh, add. I think we're good. All right, that's this has been uh, No New Ideas, Episode 2. We will be back next week for Episode 3. Which is, we have no idea. We'll see. <laughs> Thanks.